Hey collectors, Anthony from Hatchet here, and today we're going to take a look at the Micro Machine Star Trek Collector Set 2, this big boy right here. And I actually found this one at a Kmart back when it was brand new. And you can see it's uh, $30, brand new. And uh, I, I just, I love this thing. I, like it had the future ships on it which are right here from the last episode of uh, Next Generation. Oh, wow, did I... This set is the first set I had. I didn't even... I mean, I obviously thought there was a set one, but I thought, you know, something else. I don't know. Didn't I never saw it, but set two was my first. And when we get back, we're going to take a look at this big boy. And this is the Star Trek Limited Edition Collector Set 2. Um, of course, Macro Machines, and I, I got this at Kmart, I believe, and apparently on sale for twenty two forty seven. I thought it was thirty dollars, but uh, on sale, and I did not even know these things existed. I, I remember I was with my mom, and I was like, oh, "Holy crap! I gotta get these!" And uh, the price was right. And the thing that it had that really blew me away was the future set. Which include the past year, the battle cruiser, and the Enterprise E or the Enterprise D's refit. So I thought, oh heck yeah, let's let's get it. Like why pass it up? So we did. Now we're gonna flip to the back of the box. And inside of the back of the box, of course, the Enterprise D refit, the past year, and the battle cruiser. Now these are of course from the, the final episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation, all good things, I believe is what it's called, and it involves Q. So it's basically Picard bouncing back and forth in time. So then this breaks things up a little bit. Uh, there is the original series, this is the Galileo 2 from the Enterprise, uh, the K-7 Space Station, that's the one where the Tribbles and Mud were at, and then Botany Bay where they stuck um, Khan and his peeps. So then, next generation, we have the Enterprise C, that's that episode two-parter where Tasha Yar comes back, alternate timeline shenanigans occur, then she goes off into the past. Stargazer, which is Picard's former ship, a Romulan scout ship, in the uh, newer, the, kind of like the middle design, you know, because they have a bigger Romulan ship. Uh, the Defiant, obviously from Deep Space Nine, and then we have the Enterprise B, which is Excelsior class, uh, the D with an attachable saucer, which uh, is fun, just a fun little feature. The Farragut, which is uh, Kirk's first ship. Um, the, the Vulcan ship, Surak. The Federation space dock, which hangs out outside of Earth. And then, of course, the, Grim uh, the Grissom, which is a science ship. So let's uh, take these out of the box and take a closer look. Okay, so here's all the ships laid out. I just kind of split them up between uh, aliens and humans. Or Federation versus non or well, actually some of these are Federation ships. Oops. <laughs> anyway, um, the this since I got this new, it actually came with a, ba a bag of stands. So I got stands, and um, <laughs> because there's little ports on the bottom of them, so <laughs> the hardest thing to get on a stand is the Earth space dock. Oh, I should mention it did come with a diorama. There you go. I think it's Vulcan. Don't quote me on that. Okay, so this is the Earth space dock. And uh, it is like a lot of blue, gray, white. You can see um, a little bit of peeling up here, maybe. I mean, again, it's 25 years old, so. But uh, just look at the detail on this. It's just how nice. There's like a spoke pattern on there. And the antenna arrays and stuff on the top. It's just, it is so pretty. Uh, but it's a pain in the butt to balance on on a stand because it is top heavy. So just look at it fall. There you go. So then this is K7, uh, which is just does not want to stay on a stand. There's a little bit of a QA issue. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Obviously, it's 25 years too late. Uh, but uh, it's K7, and you see the so uh, the different saucers in the main one. Don't you feel like getting a triple now? Uh, but uh, just 
very nicely detailed for a basic original series style base where the, um, the space dock over there is more movie slash Deep Space Nine, gener Next Generation, you know, um, later series stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely not going on its base. Uh, I should show you what the bases generally look like. Um, this is um, not as yellow to some of them, uh, but they're just clear with a little peg on here for the, I believe it's a two millimeter port. Um, and they just attach to the bottom if they decide they want to work. You put. It, <laughs> uh, the problem is the plastic has become hard over the years, and so to get them onto the stand requires a level of force I don't want it to really do. Uh, but this is the Botany Bay. This is the ship that the Enterprise found uh, Khan and his crew on, and in, if I remember the story correctly, they tried to take over the world and then were forced onto here. And uh, the ship is a lot of just basically tan with some black and white highlights. It says nicely Botany Bay. If I remember correctly, it's supposed to be a refit nuclear sub of some type. So, uh, it's, you know, it obviously takes the look of it, at least on the front end. So, uh, Botany Bay there. So, I believe this is Sarek shuttle. Um, there's some, yeah, it's a Sarek on here. Uh, it has, um, why is it in English? Anyway, <laughs> it has a uh, Vulcan print on it. Uh, it is an odd design, and the cells really jut out here, and the really only cabin area is this, this piece right here. So it's interesting design. Uh, I don't know why it has that particular just oddity of a design. Ah, uh, the Vulcans. Who knows? But uh, anyway, this is a light blue with some gray, some yellow back on the back end here, some black highlights on the cells. It, I guess this is more of a diplomatic ship, so so that, that that's what that is. So then we move on to these the Ferengi, Ferengi Romulan Scout, and uh, yellow and blue and they sell uh, lighting, uh, green on here. Uh, the QC could have been a little bit better because it looks like somebody just smashed some paint on here. Um, you can see the the uh, kind of like the um, the bird of prey design in here. Which is common for pretty much anything for uh, Romulan related. I, I keep wanting to say Ferengi. And uh, it, again, it continues here. This is a feather arrangement, it looks like. Uh, because again, everything is based on the bird of prey. Um, or, or war bird, I should say. A bird of prey is clean. Up. Man, it makes things so close to each other. Um, but it's just, it's, this is a small ship. It's a scout. Uh, it's simple window, simple design. Um, there we go. So then we here have a Klingon ship, and uh, I, I, I just want to say Vorcha, but I feel like it's not. I'm going to say it's the, the futuristic battle cruiser. I cheated and looked. And um, it, 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 it does take up the, the Klingon design and moves it forward. So a lot sleeker. And uh, of course there's Klingon on the wings here. And... Uh, Got the Klingon symbol, more Klingon words. Uh, the nacelles. I'm a little confused about the... There's lighting down here, and these are the nacelles, maybe? Yeah. Okay, these are phaser banks. Okay, gotcha. Uh, torpedo tubes. So that's pretty nifty. A, a bridge on the top back here. Yeah, so that, that's pretty cool. So then we have the Defiant. And uh, this is the NX version, the 74205. Just a lot of detail, some gray, some white on top of a, I'm going to say kind of a gunmetal, maybe a little too light to be gunmetal. Uh, this one is fairly nicely decorated in, compared to the, the one I got in the 3-pack, uh, which is in the Assorted Set video. And uh, yeah, this is a, uh, this is nice. I, I, I'm trying to remember, because I remember the, the Defiant blew up and then they got a new Defiant, which was the old Reliant or new Reliant or whatever. Trying to remember if there's supposed to be a difference, but uh, yeah, this is defiant and uh, yeah, that looks good. So here is the Grissom, and uh, this has a, a unique kind of two-part design, where the nacelle is they're both here, but then I don't know what this is supposed to be. It's a pontoon. It does not go in the water, uh, but uh, this is a science ship. So I'm, I, I said this question, the purpose of when ships have big old gaps in them. There is no wind resistance in space. 
You don't need... You don't need that. There, there's no aerodynamics. But anyway, this is a, a lot of light blue with blue highlights, gray, brown. Uh, again, that, that common Federation spokes pattern on here. It's a nice, nice ship. Uh, then we got the Picard's first or previous assignment to the Enterprise D, the Stargazer. It's a four nacelle ship. You know, the funny thing is, like having more nacelles doesn't necessarily mean you go faster. Um, it's like, look at the the cells on the um, Enterprise B are almost twice as long, and it has two. Yet they go about the same speed. So uh, anyway, a yellow ship, blue highlights. It has the the Federation uh, markings on the bottom nacelles. Um, you can see the bridge. And uh, where, uh, over here is the ship um, launch bay. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a decent looking ship. Okay, now we go to the Enterprise B. 1701B. Um, I just, I love the the update to the design. Because I mean, when we compare it to uh, something more of the original, I was just say, I don't have one over here. Um, you, you see that they do the saucer still. They add these kind of like thrusters, nacelles here, the dock here, and um, again, I feel like there should be like a captain's yacht, uh, which was something that they wanted from the beginning, in my understanding. It's just budgetary reasons, like never got to use it. Um, and I think this is also a, a launch bay of some type as well. And it's just an interesting, sleek design. I believe the Excelsior kind of has a blue color, and they were trying to keep with the Enterprise whitish for the uh, the seven, uh, 1701B. So we get that, but we get the the blue on line uh, on the and the dish on the hull and on the nacelles. So that actually looks pretty cool. Speaking of Enterprises, here's the C. Uh, yesterday's Enterprise was a two-part episode with Tasha Yar, and we we see the spoke pattern again here. And we can see the progression into what eventually becomes the Enterprise D. Because you can see some likeness here. And I believe the philosophy is when you upgrade a ship, give it a new model, uh, you try to do change about 25% of the design. That way you can show a progression between each individual ship. So uh, Enterprise C is 25% uh Different or no, the Enterprise D is 25% changed from the C. The C is 25% changed from the from the B, and um, and then so on and so forth. And um, then we get to the differences. Um, the the cells are are pretty much the same size, uh, except the front caps are a little bit different. Uh, they, then they change the dish arrays. Uh, this one looks a little different from the classic. But definitely um, different from the one on the C, and uh, you can see that comparatively the C is actually way smaller because uh, the the Enterprise D is a family ship, like a long-term travel ship, blah blah blah. Uh, but you can see as we go through time that they change the way the bottom of the ships are, and uh, yeah. So then, since we're talking about the the D. It has a port on here. It separates into the saucer portion, so you can blow up one and crash the other one on a planet. You know, like Captain Troy, Captain Troy, uh, uh, like uh, Commander Troy does. So yeah, it does separate, and hopefully I can put it back together. Yep, very good. So that I, I love that feature. Occasionally they'll throw a nice feature in at least one ship in each of these sets, so that was appreciated. So here's the past year. This is Beverly Crusher's future ship. From all good things um, it has kind of a weird like similarity to design to the Enterprise B and I don't know if there was based on something else before but the weird rounded ball front end that's that's definitely unique has the medical the Federation medical symbol on here also on the nacelle but it has more of a reminiscent um, I want to say not that uh, not this is hmm. I was gonna say the cell reminds me of the the A refit. I don't have that here, but uh, it's supposed to be a future ship, you know. But uh, it's blue, some I'm gonna say brown, uh, red and yellow highlights, uh, blue symbolism. There's a lot. I guess you want to make sure nobody shoots you, so you have to have that medical symbol everywhere. But uh, yeah, past year. 
Then we get to the Farragut, and uh, let's see, I'm gonna grab the Enterprise D here, and you can see the, the similarities. The, the array uh, goes from the back up to the front here for lasers, except they take the nacelles, move them down. They have clearly been enlarged, and they have moved the compartment of the hull underneath, so the hull looks, you can tell it's similar in design. And uh, so you can you can see the adjustments made. Although this one isn't painted as well as this one is, as far as this plate is concerned. But uh, you can, I mean, obviously they're not the same class of ship, but you can tell where the inspiration was in designing it. Speaking of designing it, here is the Enterprise D refit, uh, the Warp Twenty ship, which uh, I believe scientists have debunked anything ever past Warp Ten to mean Warp Ten speed of light. But um, it it uh, is set for like the if you remember again, reference the Q episode, all good things. This ship has become more of a battleship instead of a exploration ship, and you can see that they've updated some of the weaponry. They've added a third nacelle. Uh, they've gotten rid of the ability to split the hull, so no escaping now. So if you're gonna die, you're gonna die hard, ha! <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just subtle changes to the overall design it's too you see now this future is never going to happen because we all know that Riker and Troy eventually get married leave the service have some kids and then Riker does the weekend warrior thing and um, ends up with the Titan at some point somewhere along those lines or no uh, they, they leave the Enterprise go to the Titan then retire and then he still gets to pull the Titan out on occasion for sh you know, battle. Okay, so this is the Enterprise's Galileo 2. And it's just the classic Galileo. Um, unlike most of these other ships where they're, where they're um, painted, uh, this one is it looks like stickers, some type of... Yeah, it's just you can, you can kind of see it on the nacelles. Um, it's just... I, I don't know, this one has a little higher quality on kind of the design here. This makes me think it's stickers or like those henna tattoos or whatever. Uh, but of course it's blocky because it's from the the Enterprise, the original series era. And that were the ships in Collector Set 2. Uh, I was so happy to find this in the store. I didn't even know it existed. Um, and then, of course, uh, there are other videos about Collector Set 1 and the assorted sets, which make up Collector Set 3. So, just so happy to get everything together. But, you know, let me know in the comments uh, your thoughts on these ships. Do you have a favorite ship? Do you have a favorite captain? Favorite series? Thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.